Hello everyone, Chris Assis here, and today we're going to look into some common Tango misconceptions. Um, it's not the only ones, we have another video coming up. So um, I don't want you though to uh, think of these items as something you should never, never do. It, But think of them as maybe things that are not related to uh, biomechanics they are they don't have to do with uh, proper balance or proper alignment um, but they're not they they are um, and they don't have to do with uh, things that can affect the originality of your tangle they only have to do with style. So if you want a certain style, if you want your dance to be of a certain style, some of these things you would have to uh, use them in your dance. But remember that this is a choice. It is not something that you have to do. It is something that you choose to do. And as one of my favorite, wonderful teachers, uh, Frey Faust, has, has used as an example, is you can, for example, use a really hard uh, toothbrush to clean your teeth. It is your choice. However, will that have a good result in the future on your teeth and gums? Most likely not, but it is your choice at the moment. So as long as you make an informed choice and you don't think that this is something that you have to do for balance, body mechanics, um, alignment, whatever, anything else other than this is the style of tango that I want to dance in, then I think you're, you're good to go. So this is a video to make uh, a statement on what is a style compared to what is called for uh, based on body mechanics. Enjoy! So we're gonna take a look at this most common way of starting your dance, right? If you were a follower or if you are a leader, so this is, I'm pretty sure you recognize this step, side and then the forward or back step. Now, as you can see from the title, we're looking to make it as effortless and efficient as possible. So here are a few goes, and just to set the tone of what we're gonna be looking at is a little box step, like literally a box step. So we're going to the side, we're just putting the two together, we're going forward, shift the weight, then side and back this time. So just to give a leader and a follower a, um, <clears throat> a way to practice this in one, one sequence. But the idea is to be able to go from one direction to the next without feeling that you are creating or holding tension. And to be able to manage this, um, these transitions in the most efficient way. Uh, that allows you to be creative and to have fun. So, misconception number one, keeping the heels together. And uh, as I said in the intro, this might be something that you like to do because you like how it looks. But have in mind that this is just a matter of style and you don't need to actually keep the heels so tight together. It might actually cause some trouble as well, but... Um, Try it, try it to put this as well as other misconceptions that are coming under the microscope and see if you really need to do it. And then try this. Our feet are slightly apart and you pass through. So yes, the heel will come close to the other one, but it doesn't necessarily we don't necessarily collect. So they're hovering 
and they are around each other and they're passing by each other. So this allows for the leg, uh, for the foot and for the leg to fully move through the, uh, through the spot like I'm doing here and allows for a slightly wider base and a better alignment on the feet. Misconception number two, toes facing forward. Um, honestly, I am not quite sure why someone would change from an orientation that has the toes facing outward to this orientation where your knees are falling in and it's quite difficult to go to the next transition, as you can see, because it forces you in a certain direction and it makes this base very unstable. So I know though that it is part of a style as well. So try this instead. You start from a, um, a wide base and you transition through a wider base. And a wider base, I mean right at the feet. So your heels are coming in towards the center line and the toes are going out a little bit towards the side every time that you step. And I am exaggerating the misconceptions and the try this part of this video. It's not necessarily um, as, as exaggerated as I'm showing it here, but the idea is to find, to find some comfort at foot level so you can expand upward. Misconception number one in terms of knees, keeping your knees together. So this, and similarly with the heels, um, we're told that it helps, uh, it helps with balance. Interestingly enough, though, are the, the shape that our bones have and how the structure is doesn't really allow for this. So try this instead. Like the heels, the knees pass through. So it's not an actual connection, but it's, it's more of uh, on being aware that they're passing from each other. Everything together. So this just puts heels, knees, everything together. And as we mentioned before in the heels and the knees, the idea is to try this. Bringing, uh, creating um, a connection through movement, through, through a pass-through movement and through awareness. Hips. Keep them steady. So I want you to actually try this, even if you had never put any thought into how your hips are supposed to move in tango. But this is um, quite important because if you try to move without moving your hips, I think you can't even see the tension in this video. So everything in the lower body just moves as one. And that's not. So try this instead. So there are a couple of movements that happen in the hips. Forward and back, up and down, and front and back. So let's see. Up and down. Every time that you take a step, the hip slightly goes up, up, up. So see how I settle? And I'm exaggerating, lifting the knee. But once you settle, that free leg can, that free hip will actually move upward. It's a forward and back motion, like a little wave. And that involves the uh, upper body as well. Of course, the first one involved the upper body, the upper body too. And then it's a front and back action. And um, that, of course, involves the upper body as well. The, 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 the important thing about the hips is that everything is attached. So the, whatever it is that you're doing in the lower body will affect your upper body because you have a spine and the upper and the lower are connected. So if we try to put all of these movements together and aim for um, tension-free hips and tension-free lower back. So let's take a look. If we start to move, you can see I'm hoping I use this top on purpose. You can see the side bend every time uh, that I take a step. 
in the drapes of the of the top and you can see that the hips are not square right here and they're moving forward and back and you can also see that they're moving in a wave so how does that affect the upper body let's do exactly the same uh, the same exercises, only now focusing on the upper body. So every time you settle, that side bend, of course, it's not only shown in the hips where one hip is moving up and compared to the other, but also in the shoulders. Same happens with this. Every time your hips twist forward and back, the upper body twists as well. And of course, I'm exaggerating, you don't dance like this. But say you wanted to kick a ball you wouldn't keep the upper body steady and if you're doing a wave and i'm turning so you can see it better and again i am exaggerating but this is effectively what we're talking about then as the hips come forward the lower back curves and the upper back curves as well and vice versa so in this step we want to have all of these movements together and to feel them in the hips and in the shoulders and in the whole spine. So notice how much different this is compared to the beginning of this video. And believe me, it wasn't intentional, but as, as I was going through this exercise, um, the body gets freed up more and more just by, just by taking your mind to these spots that might have been for one or the other reason tighter, um, you might have been holding back, you might have been uh, getting caught up in... Um, misconceptions that might not really suit your body 